Um, so I have a few related questions. Uh, I'll try and group them together. Uh, I'm a peace and truth seeker, but I could not find the truth that I'm looking for. However, the part in Islam which sometimes, sometimes convinces me the most is worshipping God alone. But when I see the actions of Muslims globally, it makes me confused. Uh, where can I find the true example of Islam? Uh, and then related to that also I have, uh, why are Muslims not speaking enough against terrorism? Uh, and why are there verses in the Quran that incite hatred and violence against non-Muslims? Um, the first question actually had a very profound beginning, and that is that uh, the strongest appeal that the person had to Islam was in monotheism and in the worship of God alone. And the fact of the matter is that that is the primary and strongest appeal of our religion. And that is really what sets our religion apart from all other religions. Because many religions pe preach peace and beauty and tolerance and this and that, but we would say that ultimate monotheism and true monotheism is perfected in this religion of Islam uh, where God and his names and attributes where our veneration and worship are directed to him alone where uh, where the beautiful names of Allah uh, the Quran says all beautiful names belong to Allah uh, so when we look at this particular aspect of monotheism it is the strongest and it is the primary uh, appeal that Islam has to all of mankind and I would encourage you to study more about this issue about monotheism in Islam and uh, inshallah ta'ala I pray that Allah guides me and you and all of us to the truth. Uh, then you said that um, you don't find Islam practiced properly. I think that uh, what you're basically saying is that human beings are imperfect and this is absolutely right. That human beings no matter who they are, no matter what they are, they can never reach a level of absolute and ultimate perfection. No matter what religion they follow, no matter what guidance they follow, they will always fall short uh, to a certain extent. And unfortunately, we have sensationalized a group of people who have fallen short to a greater extent possibly in their uh, shortcomings and their acts of violence and terrorism. Uh, but I continue to remind you, and this is a statistical fact, the overwhelming majority of Muslims are not uh, prone to violence and terror and evil. You're amongst a gathering of Muslims, there are around three, 4,000 Muslims here, which is one of the largest gathering in America. If you go to any other gathering of Muslims as well, you're not going to be around uh, 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 hate rousers and rabble rousers. You're gonna be around peaceful, God-fearing citizens, just like you and me, just like all of us. So don't judge the actions uh, don't judge uh, Islam based upon the actions of a few people. I'm not justifying what they're doing. I'm saying statistically they represent a very, very small minority. As for the fact that we don't criticize them enough, I'm going to uh, allow Professor Matson to, to elaborate because I'm sure she's asked this question a lot more. But from my side, I'll say we criticize them all the time. We criticize them from the pulpits. We criticize them in conferences. I have given, I just attended a number of conferences where the main theme of the conference was, was basically uh, countering radicalization amongst our youth. We're doing it all the time, but it's simply not sensationalistic. It's not something that w will appear in the nightly news because it's not something that's uh, sexy and alluring, pardon my language. It's not something that people want to discuss. It's that you'd rather, you'd rather show the bomb that that, that uh, happened in, in Pakistan and, and targeted the Ahmadiyya minority, you're not going to show the preacher who's giving a, preacher, a, preacher of a speech of tolerance. It's not very alluring. So I think that we are always preaching uh, a, a moderate version of Islam. We're always preaching uh, against uh, radicalization and terror. Uh, it's just that, uh, as I said, the media chooses to pick and choose what it wants to portray us as doing. And I'll let Professor Matson elaborate more on that. Yeah, you know, it's not even what the media chooses um, to, to portray. It's how our, our brain processes information. Um, and there have been many, many studies uh, about this. So I think there's one book called The Grill in the Room or something like that. We see selectively, and our brains see those things and remember those things that are vital for self-interest first. So if, if there's, say you read the newspaper and there's you know, 15, 20 stories, the one that's gonna stick with you for a long time will be the one that terrifies you, the one that frightens you. Because there's a place, it's, it's necessary to prioritize, for your brain to prioritize that for self-preservation. You can read all so many nice things, a nice Muslim family having dinner together, they work at the soup kitchen. You, it'll be ephemeral. It'll stay with you for, for a short time and it'll be, it'll be gone. 
So that's one of our challenges because um, this is a universal challenge. If you go to other parts of the world and you ask them about their impression, not, not just the Muslim world, other parts of the world, ask them about their impressions of Americans. What will their impressions be? Believe me, very often they'll have a, such a bizarre idea of American society. They'll think it's a place of complete debauchery. They'll think that, you know, that uh, there's just like, they'll be afraid to go into cities. They'll think it's completely violent because this, this, these are the images that they get. So we have very distorted impressions of each other and we need to work on that. The person said that he or she's a seeker of the truth. We really have to go and find out what the truth of people is. And I can tell you that the acts of kindness and generosity that you see among normal and ordinary Muslims every day will astound you. You know, turn off the TV and go and, and just be with people and see their kindness. People who don't have a lot, who, who constantly extend their homes and, and their, their hand to other people in need, not just other Muslims, but non-Muslims. Do you know that people in Gaza, Palestinians in Gaza, felt so sorry for the Haitians that they, they raised money? They have no money, but they raised, they gathered together some money and supplies to send to Haiti because they felt so empathetic for what they saw. So you will see this generosity among ordinary Muslim people. And, and finally, the majority victims of, of terrorists who, who are Muslim are other Muslims. So if you want to ask, you know, where are the Muslims? Well, Afghanistan is 99.9% .9 Muslim. So the people who are putting their bodies on the line are Muslim doctors, nurses, teachers, police officers, who are trying to build their society. So, you know, if you, if you look, Muslims are not only speaking, they're acting, and they are working hard to, to, to build their own societies.